Hello and welcome to You So You. My name's Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I spin on a drop spindle, I dabble in weaving from time to time and this week we're talking cast on. So grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. Welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction to this video, today we're talking about cast-ons and specifically we're talking about the alternating cable cast-on. That's because it's the one I'm using for a current project. Um, on Saturday I cast on a sweater for my partner that's worked in the flat, so I cast on the front. On Tuesday I cast off the front. Yes, that is super quick. This sweater is knit up in chunky yarn, which is why it's working up so quickly. And I'm really pleased that it is because he's like six foot three and likes to wear his sweaters long. So invariably I have to add at least five inches to anything I make him. So chunky yarn for the win. Um, so last night I actually cast on the back of the sweater and I filmed some footage of me working the beginning of that cast on to show you guys how I, how I do it. Um, so to give you an idea of the finished edge, uh, this is the back so far, so this is what I knit up last night before I had to go to bed. Um, and yeah, the, the cast on really does just disappear into the ribbing edge and it is nice and stretchy. So it's going to be good for sweaters, it's going to be good for hats, that kind of thing. So let's take a little look at how I work the cast on. Okay, so the alternating cable cast on. As you can see from the finished edge of the front of the sweater, it's a nice and neat finish uh, to the, the cast on it blends in with the ribbing nicely and it's got a good amount of stretch for it so as I say it's good for hats and sweaters and things um, so it's related to the cable cast on just a slight variation um, and they are both short tail cast on so you don't need to worry about how much yarn you're going to need for the cast on edge um, so here we have my nice chunky yarn it's a, a, tw a king cole tweed yarn so it is uh, an acrylic wool blend I mean, it's not as bad as 100% acrylic to, to work with, but uh, you can feel the acrylic in it as you're knitting. So if you're used to wool, bear that in mind. So the first thing to do is create a slip knot around your needle. I just do that by wrapping the yarn around my fingers and popping the needle in. Um, so then that needle is going to go into your left hand with the short tail, which you're going to hold out of the way. First thing you're going to do after that is to knit one stitch through the slip knot that's on your needle. And then you're going to pop it onto the left needle knitwise. Okay, so there we are, we're ready to start. So we're going to put the needle through between those two stitches and pull the yarn through from behind and again slip that onto the needle knitwise. So far it's exactly like the cable cast on. Now we're going to get to the difference. We're going to take the needle from behind, put it between the two stitches and essentially purl. So we're going to wrap the, the yarn from the front and put it through to the back. Again we're going to pop that onto the needle knitwise, the left needle knit up knitwise. So we've knit one and purled one. Now we're going to knit again, so needle through between the two stitches from the front. You can make sure you go between and not through the stitch. Wrap the yarn and pull it through from the back to the front. Pop the stitch on knitwise. And again from behind. Put the needle through from the back. It can get a little bit fiddly when you've only got a few stitches, but persevere, it's fine once you get going. Um, so yeah, wrap the yarn from the front and pull it through to the back. And um, one thing to bear in mind is the yarn will actually end up on the side of the stitch, the working yarn will end up on the side of the stitch that you need to put the needle through from. So if the yarn is coming out the front of the stitch, you're ready to knit. So you can put the needle in from the front, wrap the yarn and pull it through, just as you can see me doing here. If the yarn is coming out from the back of the stitch, however, then you're going to be putting the needle in from behind 
where it wants to go through, wrapping the yarn at the front and pulling through to the back. So if you do lose track of where you are in your cast and you're not sure whether you've got a knit or purl, just have a little look at where that yarn is sitting. Uh, so if it's coming out the front, your needle ent it enters from the front. If it's coming out from the back, it enters from the back. And you're always going to be putting the stitch from the right needle onto the left needle knit-wise. So you can be taking the left needle around to the right-hand side of the stitch to slip it back on to the left needle. That way the stitches are all going to be oriented correctly when you come to the next row to do your knit one purl one ribbing. And obviously I am casting off a knit one purl one at the moment. You could absolutely change the rhythm of the, the cast on if you were going to be doing a knit two purl two for instance. So you take it through from the front twice and then through from the back twice. Clearly the yarn is not going to help you quite so much with working out where you are if you're lost. But for knit one purl one it really will. Um, I've also noticed as I do these cast-ons that the stitches do sit one in slightly further forward than the other. So that's another way to show the rhythm of how your stitches are falling. Um, the, when you're actually working a, a ribbing that is a, a different rhythm to the, the Knit One Pearl one. So just watch how those ne the stitches are sitting on the needle as you do your first few stitches and you'll soon be able to read your knit knitting as you get going along the cast on. So you're just going to repeat doing the same routine to, until you've got the number of stitches that you need for your pattern. I happen to need 96 for uh, the back of this sweater so I'm just going to keep going <laughs> until I get there uh, but I haven't filmed all of that for you because I thought hey you don't want to see me cast on like, nearly 100 stitches that, that's just going to be too long. Uh, but by all means feel free to rewind and replay this section of the video to really let those stitches sink into your mind if that's what you need to do in order to, to actually work the cast on. Um, so yeah, we just have a few stitches on the needle there and I'm going to pop off and uh, finish casting on um, and uh, you may well have a sweater soon. As I say, you can have this nice stretchy, neat edge to the the knitting to the castle edge when it's done. Okay, so uh, have a go. See how you get on with the alternating cable cast on. So I hope you found that useful and interesting. If you did, pop a like and a comment down below and let me know what you're casting on this week. Uh, I aim to put a video up every weekend. Once a month it's a what I've been making the previous month video. Other times it's more technique based or project based like this video. And sometimes it's just me waffling at the camera. So if you've enjoyed my company, do all the things the YouTubers tell you to do down there. And uh, by always go and check out these videos. And I will see you next week. But until then, happy crafting and bye-bye for now.